Red Sox hosting the Reds, and the Red Sox are minus 165 on the money line. The Reds are plus 140. The over-under is at nine runs. The Red Sox laying a run and a half on the run line are plus 115, meaning if you bet them that way, they have to win by two. While the Reds getting a run and a half on the run line are minus 140, meaning if you bet them that way and they win this game outright, you win. They lose by one, you win. Green pitched once against the Red Sox last year. Three and two-thirds, four runs, four earned. They lost that game seven to one, and that was in Boston. And Sale did not pitch against the Reds either last year or this year. The Reds are three and seven as a team with Green on the mound. He's averaging five innings pitched, but 7.2 strikeouts per game in those games. Now, it depends on what the casino is going to set it at. I imagine they're going to set his over-under for strikeouts at, you know, six and a half. But it's Fenway Park. It's a small park. So if he starts getting in trouble and he gives up a home run early in the game, they may 86 him out of the game early. So he's kind of one of these guys who I'm on the fence about. We'll see what they let, set the odds at. The Red Sox are 7-3 and three with Sale on the mound as a team. They've won his last two starts. He's averaging five and a third innings pitched and six and a half strikeouts per game in those games. So he would be another one that you might consider taking if the over-under for strikeouts is at like six instead of six and a half. Now head-to-head, -head, the road team is eight and two. The road team's on a two-game winning streak. The Reds are on a three-game winning streak. The Red Sox are six and four against the Reds in their last 10. The underdogs won the last three games. The favorite is five and five on the money line, while the underdog getting a run and a half on the run line is seven and three. There have been five one run games in their last 10 meetings, including I believe the last two games they played against each other. The last two games that they played against each other. The under is eight and two in their last 10, and the under nine specifically is five, one, and four. So five games went under, one game went over, and four games hit nine exactly. So if you can find a way to get this at nine and a half, you may want to bet the under. Now, the wind is blowing out towards the green monster right now at 6.9 miles per hour. It's more so towards left center than actually like dead left field. But keep that in mind. The, red, uh, the green monster is the smallest part of the field. And when there's wind, dangerous things happen. The last game that they played, the Red Sox lost 5-4. The game before that, the Reds won 9-8. The game before that, the Reds won 5-1. And then last handful of games overall, the Reds are on a winning streak. They are on a five-game winning streak, and they are 7-3 uh, and three in their last 10. 13 runs, 13 runs, 17 runs, 9 runs. Back-to-back -back games where they scored 8 runs and 1 against the Cubs, 9 runs and a win, 5 runs and a win. And then the Red Sox have dropped their last 3. They're 1-3 and three in their last 4, and 3-7 and seven in their last 10. 3 runs, 6 runs, 17 runs, 9 runs. 2 runs and a win, 2 runs and a loss, 8 runs and a loss, four runs and a loss. I am really, really, really on the fence about this game because whenever I say something like I don't foresee the Red Sox losing three games in a row at home, they go and lose three games in a row at home. If you're looking at these pitchers matchups, they are fairly evenly matched. It's just the Red Sox have been winning more games with sale on the mound. So I'm going to hedge my bets here again and hope for another one run game. I'm going to take the Red Sox with the money line. I am going to take the Reds getting the runs, and I'm going to go under. These are just my picks. If you disagree, please go with your gut, and please bet responsibly.